Hey there, just need a few seconds of your time before the video starts. I just wanted to say thank you um, for the amazing turnaround in subscribers and watch time. Because, yeah, I don't know what else to say. It's an amazing turnaround. We're at 56.3. And all I can say is thank you. So, in return, I'll keep trying to provide content you guys find amazing and you want to watch. And if you have any suggestions, just remember to hit up the comments section or the community tab posts. That way I know I can provide stuff you guys find interesting. And just have a good day or night. I'll let you get on to the video now. I just wanted to address this because it's amazing and I appreciate it. Alright, peace out. Hey there. I, uh, I'm back for another video. Another speed paint video. And this time it's going to be on a Newgrounds Valentine's card. It's uh, it Basically the collaboration was we were assigned to make a little piece for uh, for a Newgrounds for Valentine's Day. They asked us to either make an OC, which is an original character, or a Newgrounds character and make a Valentine's Day card um, based um, drawing. So that's what I'm doing here. And the reason why the footage is so fast is because I spent so much time working on this. I was making sure all my lines were correct. I was, I was really picky with this one. And you're going to notice how much I erase stuff, how much I eventually reevaluate the positions of certain points like the arms, the hands, etc. So yeah, I like how it turned out. But yeah, it's going <laughs> to... You're going to notice a lot of erasing and all kinds of other stuff here. But anyway... Um, I'm not sure for future installments. I'm not sure if I'm going to talk through the whole thing. I'm not sure if you guys enjoy that or not. I didn't have much feedback on the previous entry. But I'm still going to make these anyway because I, I enjoy making these. Um, to me, I, on YouTube personally, I find it fascinating to watch artists do this where they just like do commentary over their drawing and you can just see the process but also you can talk about other stuff at the same time. I, it's kind of just like a way to watch something happen without having to, you know, you don't have to wait for the whole thing to be made. Because I'd say, I'd say this took me about four or five hours. And this is going to be processed and sped up into about maybe 40 to 50 minutes. And yeah, so sometimes when it comes to drawing, it can take a while because as you can see there, I messed up the fingers. I had to remember there's five, not six fingers. And, and hands can be a bitch to draw. And I don't draw them in the traditional sense all the time. For me, when it comes to hands, I like drawing them blocky. I don't know why, I just do. I find it fun to make the hands blocky. And so I guess I can describe this. The theme for this, my theme, is I wanted to make the Orange Knight because honestly I don't see it too much fan art of the Orange Knight. There is some. Like if you go on to Google or Newgrounds, you'll see some fan art for the Orange Knight from Castle Crashers. But I don't see a lot, especially with this collaboration I looked through everyone else's pieces that they made and I saw that no one was making art for the Orange Knight so I said you know what screw it I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make one for the Orange Knight and so I had him doing this pose and the idea was and you'll see it as it goes along I was taking a break here because I did this on live stream and now the screen is black I don't know why it's black there we go came back um, I guess I just exited out of the program by mistake because I do these I do these on live streams. That's why you might see a few seconds of it pause and come back. Um, but anyway, the theme and idea was I wanted to give him the axe, his broad axe, because I believe that's the main weapon for the Orange Knight in Castle Crashers. Um, because in a lot of fan art I see them using swords. I don't really see a lot of axes. That's also why I chose to use the axe idea, because I didn't really see a lot of fan art with axes. I saw swords, plenty of swords, but not axes. So, I mean, I could be wrong. I probably just didn't see, you know, I didn't see the other fan art um, with axes. 
But that was the main, I, main reason I did that. And if you see me making random lines or X's, that's because during live streams I try to explain my process as well. Because it's a lot slower. A lot slower. Like, I take my time, I try to chat, I have, uh... Sometimes I have some friends from Discord come on and we just shoot the shit and we talk while I... You know, I, I do this, I do these drawings. And so, <laughs> you saw a brief glimpse. Um, there was a brief glimpse there for like one millisecond. My friend, um, one of, uh, someone I know on YouTube, his name is Osimo. I did some collaborations with him. He, uh, he did a little drawing, uh, his own version. Because around this point in the stream, he came online and on Discord and we were just talking and I was explaining what I was doing. So, this is all the way back in February. This is from a few months ago. And, yeah. And, um, at the end of the video, I should say, at the end of the video, you'll get to see the completed piece. I have, um, because toward the end, tail end of the stream, I didn't complete it. Um, but I'll show you at the end. You'll get to see the completed piece. And I think it came together pretty good. And I was told by some users that they would love to actually have a Valentine's card of this, and and for me, that's a high honor because sometimes I don't think my art is that great. And they cut out again, came back. But yeah, sometimes I don't think my art is that good. But I guess I'm wrong. But I think that's I think that's the case with everyone who draws. They don't see their stuff as worthy, like for people buying it or wanting it. It's kind of, it's a weird thing. I don't know why it's a thing. I guess it's because you make it, and you don't see it as that valuable. Because you see so many other artists and their work, and especially if you're, like, in school, you see, like, all these artists and their work, and, you know, you're just like, damn, boy, do I wish I could draw like that. That'd be cool. And, but, but the, the case probably was back in the day, when they were drawing, and they were making their art. The case probably was, was that they probably saw their work as useless too. Like, they didn't see it as beautiful, or they didn't see it as valuable to society. They were probably just like, you know, uh, you know, like, man, yeah, I made this, but, you know, no one's buying it, or no one likes it. And, it's a weird phenomenon, I noticed, like, I don't know why it matters when artists die, but apparently their work, it's a weird phenomenon. Their work gets more value when they die, especially like for very famous painters like, uh, like Michelangelo. I know he's one who had, uh, he has like art that was valued after he died and people, I guess they noticed it more. People were just like, damn, we, we slept on this guy's work, you know? And I think, uh, I think the same was with Leonardo da Vinci, too. I think some of his work was slept on, too, and then, as years went on, artists were like, damn, you know, we could actually learn from this. And no, and, and I know what this sounds like, I'm not saying my work is on that level, hell no. I draw cartoonish art, those guys specialized in realism, at least in some aspects. My art is more cartoony, and because I always loved animation, I've talked about this before, I believe, in my previous installment. But yeah, I love animation, so that's my main style. I like cartoonish stuff. I have drawn realistically before, but for me, I don't have that much fun with it. I don't know why, I just don't. I don't have fun with it. And as I said in my previous installment, um... If you made it this far, these commentaries are going to be scatterbrained, because I don't go off of a script. And that's something else I guess I could have feedback from you as well. If you would like to see a more concise, like, commentary, you can let me know in the comments. But I'm kind of treating this like uh, how you buy a DVD and you listen to commentary from the creators as they watch their own thing. I'm kind of treating it like that. I'm just trying to think of things to talk about and to say. And I'm just going with it. And yeah, I... <laughs> something I will say about this piece. I like how I made the princess, the clown princess, for the Orange Knight. 
because, again, I didn't really see people make a lot of fan art of her either. As the clown, anyway, I saw her with the uh, face covering. A lot of people like to do the face covering for fan art for the clown princess. I don't know why. Because I think the clown princess has potential for good fan art, even if it's goofy or weird. I think it has potential. That's also why I did this. Because I think it would be a good fit. And when you see the final product, when you see the final product, you'll know what I'm talking about. You'll know what I mean. And you'll be like, and you'll probably be like, damn, he was right, you know, it does look good, you know. Um, that is if you like my art. If you don't, then you don't. And I understand, you know, I understand if you don't. Completely understandable. But yeah, um, what else can we talk about here? Um, yeah... I'm trying to think here. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Uh, yeah, the helmet. That helmet was kind of a pain in the ass to draw. You know, um, I'm very picky with lines, and as you can see, I'm erasing, erasing, redrawing, redrawing. That's part of the reason why some of these take so long, is because I want the lines to look good. Because, and I also explained this in the previous installment as well. I like to have the cartoonish style, but also have, like, good, refined lines. Like, I like to try and put as much effort in as I can. Because it's like simplicity, right? It's like simplicity, but also co complexity in some way or another. Complexity in some way or another. If that makes any sense. I'm sure to some of you it does, some it doesn't. And, I mean, really, um... It just... I'm just a picky bastard, and sometimes I just don't think my stuff is good. You know, now that I look at it, those lines could have worked for the eyes, but I guess not. Those underlines for, like, uh... But, but at the same time, it doesn't make sense because it's a helmet, you know? I had to keep that in mind. It's not like a organic face, like the Clown Princess. Hers is organic. The Orange Knights is uh, more metallic and metal because it's armor. And, um, when I talk about simple but yet complex, you'll see that in the footage as well. When I get to the finer details of the piece, when I get to the finer details. You'll see what I'm talking about. And here, I had another friend on the live stream. He goes by Youngblood. Um, he suggested I make a curved end to the axe, and at first I went with it, but you'll see as it goes on. I decided to change my mind on that, and I was like, screw it, you know, I, I wanna... Because I like having suggestions for my art, but sometimes when I do it, it just doesn't feel right. I don't know why. And again, that could be because of me being a picky bastard, or whatever, you know, that could be because of that. And at one point, I was gonna add that spear tip to the axe at one point. I believe I remove it, if I remember correctly. I remove it. But that had potential as well. That had potential. Um, maybe for another piece, if I do another Castle Crasher piece, I can add a spear tip, or have them hold a spear. Because, again, I, I it's cool that the fan art has swords and stuff, right? It's cool. But, I mean, there are other weapons in the game. There's a ton of weapons, and I'm surprised that a lot of people just go with the basic sword. But yeah, um, I don't know, it's weird, because you think there'd be a whole bunch of different variety. Like, I believe even Alien Hominid in the game, in Castle Crashers, I believe he has the blaster from the game. And that kind of acts like a sword, but I believe it also shoots projectiles. So it's a, technically a gun. And I don't really see a lot of people do that for fan art, which is weird to me. But again, I'm not the person who makes it, you know, I'm not them. Because people have different perspectives when it comes to art and how they do things. So, yeah, it's kind of a... Art is a fickle mistress, you know, it can be... It's a weird process. And I'm sure... I'm sure I talked about this in the previous installment as well. But a lot of people, I've gotten questions from people, they ask how, you know, how you do art, how you draw, and stuff like that, right? People ask. And, 
honestly, it's just practice, and it's like a, any skill, right? You, you practice, you keep going, you draw, and you just you just keep doing it. And that and that's probably the most stereotypical answer you're gonna hear ever from any artist. It's the most stereotypical answer, but it's the truth though at the same time. It's not to be an asshole and be like, oh, well, you're just being a dick. You don't want to tell me. Yeah, no, no, no. It's 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 the only thing we can have the time people can come up with because it's the truth, you know? And it's just the case. It's weird, but it's the case. Because eventually, you'll get used to drawing lines more. You'll get used to drawing more complex shapes, more complex ideas. Because sometimes it's hard to see something in your head and put it on a piece of paper, whether it's physical or digital. It's hard. And uh, now we're going to get to the coloring segment. So, oh yeah, that, that. At one point, I had an idea to add those dots in uh, for the background. And I kind of so wish I went through with it. But I didn't have time. Because I was on a time crunch, I didn't have time. And that's something I gotta work on, is I gotta join collaborations at the start. Because then I can have time to add those finer points and details. And make it even better. Because a lot of these collaborations, a lot of these speed paints you're gonna see, I join the collaborations at the tail end. Like, uh, I'd say about a week or two weeks before it's due. And, um... And yeah, if I had more time... I believe I can make some very stellar things, or at least high quality. And I'd say this is pretty good quality when it's finished. I'd say it's pretty good, but I don't know about super high quality because I don't. I didn't really add shading to the piece at all, or anything like that. I didn't really add shading to it. So yeah, and also I did that with the hand. I did that so it looks curved, so it looks like she's grabbing on him. That's why I did that. And, yeah. Sorry if this commentary is lackluster. I'm just, uh, much like you, I'm observing what's going on as I speak. And, as I said, it's going to be scatterbrained. Might not be so condensed or thought out. But, yeah, um, that's why I also said, maybe in future installments I won't talk through the whole thing because... Maybe you'll just want to watch this and have some music on in the background. And, uh, who knows? Maybe I'll try that with one installment, you know? Maybe I'll try that. But I'll have to see what you think. And this is, um, this is what I was talking about earlier. This is what I was elaborating on by, by simple yet complex. Because this is, this is the chain mail on the night. This is the chain mail, um, for the arms. And... I, at first I was going to just color it gray, like a darker gray, but it wouldn't feel right. To me, it wouldn't feel right, it'd feel lazy. So, that's why I'm like, you know what, screw it, I'll draw the pattern in. And, what also sucked about this, what, what took so long, I didn't put it on a separate layer, so it took me even longer to color, um, to color it when it gets to that part. It took me longer to color it. But here I was starting to really get into it. Here, when I saw this, I'm like, yeah, I gotta finish this up. So, yeah, sorry for the seizure-inducing um, speed in, speed out. Sorry about that. Um, I do that because when you do the finer details in work, you want to get really up close so you can see what you're doing. And it's, it's important because you don't want to screw up your lines, you don't want to screw up the pattern, you know? So you just want to see what you're up to and what you're doing. So that's why you see it zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. That's why I do that. It's not to give you a seizure, it's just to work on the finer points and the finer details. And it looks shit right now, it looks like shit. And you might be wondering, why does it look like scales? And technically, in a retrospect, um, Technically, chain armor can look like scales. It's kind of modeled off of scales, I think. Because of how the chains are linked in chain armor. So, like I was saying, it looks like garbage. 
but uh but it will look better once it's colored and that's also another point here with the axe my friend suggested adding battle damage and that was a good suggestion so see i try to take some suggestions at least at least some because people do have some good criticisms right and that's kind of important to do it's important to take criticism from people but not let it over evaluate your vision so take it with a grain of salt right so like for example my friend said you know it'd be cool if you added battle damage to the axe and i said you know what that would be cool i like that idea and so i did it but he also suggested adding the curved um you know the curved handle and i tried it at first and i'm like yeah you know what no i don't want it i don't want it because at the end of the day it's your piece, you're drawing it, it's, um, it's your idea. And so, you want to, it's a balance, right? You want to take the criticism of somebody, but also not compromise your vision and what you're trying to do. So, in my opinion, just take that with a grain of salt, you know, just be like, yeah, that's a good idea, maybe I can implement it, and you can try it, right? You're going to try implementing the idea, and then if you don't like it, then you can be like, no, no, I don't like that, though. I don't like that. And so then and then you don't do it, you know, because it's your piece at the end of the day. And the only time I would say that's different is if you're doing a commission. Because in the past, I have done commissions before. And yeah, if you, that's the only exception is if it's a commission. Because at the end of the day, that then that drawing is for someone else. And if they want it that way, then you should make it that way. You know? Because they're paying you for the work. It's their piece. It's for them. So then, if that's their vision, you have to follow their vision. So it, it all correlates into... It's like a balancing act, right? You just want to be sure that you can just follow the balance. And maintain it if that makes any sense at all <clears throat> but yeah um it's coming together here as you can see i got the coloring done on the axe not fully done but i got it done and then there i realized my mistake that i didn't put it on layers so now i got color it colored by hand it's gonna be a pain in the ass yep it's going to be a pain in the ass. It's going to be slow as hell. i got to re redefine the lines after coloring it. And after this, I learned my lesson. Because holy shit, I'm like, no, I can't do this. <laughs> I can't do this. Because on layer... If you ever use this program, right? Here, i got to take a drink here. i got to take a drink. So excuse me if you hear me taking a drink. Excuse me. Okay. So, if you're ever using a program like this, if you ever use a program like this here, like Psy, you will want to, you'll want to make separate layers. So, like for your for your line work, you'll typically want to put that on layer one, and then after, I'd say after that, after you get your line work done. You want to put layer two you want to make another layer and have that be for coloring because then it's going to save you so much time and you won't have to worry about the bucket tool ruining all your lines and making them look like garbage like pixelated garbage because the paint bucket tool is a good tool but it also ruins the texture it ruins the textures of your lines it doesn't make them look fine and crisp it makes them look more pixely. And that's something that you typically want to avoid. Unless you're making pixel art. Unless you're doing that. And then in that case, you know, then it'll be good. And you'll be good to go. So, yeah. Just take that advice. I'd say take that advice. If you're going to do this. If you're going to draw on Psy or any other, uh, any other art program. You want to do on layer 1. 
You want to do your line work? Layer 2 coloring. I'll save you the pain like this. I'll save you the pain because you're, you're seeing it in real time. Well, not real time. You're seeing it sped up. But if you were seeing it on stream, it would have taken me forever, dude. It would have taken me forever. And man, <laughs> this took a long time. Just watching it brings back the memory of doing it. And it hurt my hands so bad. Because I don't draw on a tablet like a lot of other people who do digital art. I don't draw on a tablet. I, I draw all this with a mouse because I can't afford a tablet. My friend did give me a basic drawing tablet for the um, for the PC. I'm still trying to get used to using it. Like, I use it from time to time. But for projects like this, since I'm still used to it, I mainly use a mouse to draw. And, yeah. Um, eventually, your hand cramps up. And, yeah, just seeing this, it's bringing back that memory. And it hurts. It, it honestly hurts. So don't be like me. And don't make that crucial mistake. Just don't do it. Please, I beg you. Just don't do it. And, yeah. Um, here, hold on. I'll have to cut this out. <laughs> God. <clears throat> Fucking allergies. But yeah, as you can see here, now I'm starting to do the coloring. I'm starting to do the coloring now. It's looking pretty good, I'd say. I like the colors I chose. I think the orange was good. And then also the pink and the peach. I think I got the peach perfect for the hands for her. I think. And this also took a while too. Because, you know, you have to make sure your lines look good. Yep, like that. You gotta recolor some lines in after you color. And again, I was being an idiot. I was being an idiot. It's all on one layer. I wasn't thinking, I just wanted to draw it. So again, I'm stressing it, and I'm gonna sound like a broken record. But don't be like me, okay? Learn from my mistake, because it'll save you so much time and headache. Because if I did all the inking, if I did all the... If I did all the lines on layer 1 and colored on layer 2, this would have been a lot shorter of a painting to do. Or, I shouldn't say painting, I should say drawing. It would have been a lot less of a project, like long project. It would have cut so much time out, and I could have done, I could have got it done so much faster. And that's another thing with me when when I draw crosses or plus or plus signs. To me, I always get it off in one way or another, and by off I mean like like it seems like. It just seems like it's off in one way or another, and it pisses me off really bad. Like, for real. It makes me angry. Because it, it, cause sometimes I'm like, oh, it's good, and then I look at it again, and I'm like, no, it's off. It's not right. Oh, and I have a little break segment. <laughs> There's a better look at my friend's, uh, at Osimo's drawing for... That's his version for Valentine's. That's his Red Knight. He drew the Red Knight from Cast Crashers. And then he drew the, his uh, baddie. He drew his baddie right there. <laughs> As you can see, he drew his baddie. And I, I gotta say, I love her. I love her noodle hair. Or they could be arms. You know, it could be it. It could be her arms. Uh, but yeah, I was gone for a bit. Um, but now I'm back. Now I'm back here, and I continue my coloring. We're actually uh, getting pretty close to being done with it. I, I'd say we're almost halfway through. Pretty soon you're gonna see the final details. You're gonna see the more intricate um, parts of the work and stuff like that. You're gonna see that soon. And yeah, just looking at it, I could have saved myself so much time because you're gonna see future installments of me doing this and you're gonna see it's gonna take a lot less time because after these mistakes I made, I'm like, okay, I can't have this happen again. I can't go through this pain and turmoil. So I learned to color on different layers. I learned to draw on different layers. So that this does not happen. 
and <laughs> I already said it, I expressed it. Just don't do it. It's a pain in the ass. It's so painful. Don't do it. I beg you. Don't don't do it. Don't do it this way. Please. Please don't. And yeah, I guess I took some of the damage lines away, and now I'm doing more intricate detail, like I'm adding in some scuff marks on the axe, I'm adding in some scuff marks. So this is the point where you're gonna see the more, like I just said, you're gonna see the more intricate, finer details. Maybe some stuff you didn't see from first glance, if you ever saw this piece. Because when I, when I, when I get done with these, I post them on my community tab. So then that way you guys can see them. Otherwise you can, if you like, you can check out my Newgrounds page. I have these up there as well. If you ever want to see any of my other art I've published, you can look at my Newgrounds page and see all of that there. I have a link of that. I have a link for that in the description or on my channel homepage. And yeah. And also, um, I'll put it in the description as well. If you ever if you're ever looking to commission me, if you ever want your own personalized piece of art, um, you can email me um, at if or no, you can email me at orangepixeljuice at gmail.com if you're ever interested. I'll have a link to that in the description. And we can talk about the more finer details there, what you're looking for. We can discuss all those details there. If you're looking to get your own piece of personalized art, if you're ever looking for it, that's an option for you. And I'd be happy to do that for you. Because I'm honestly, I'd be, I'd be interested. I'd be like, okay, you got, you want, you want something drawn? What are we, what are you thinking? Because I'd be interested. Because not only does that give me something to draw, but it also provides me some stability. It also gives me some income as well. So not only is there an artistic, uh, not only is there artistic um, inspiration, but also there'd be financial. And to me, that's the best of both worlds because then I can provide art for someone who wants it, but also get paid for the work that I'm doing. And again, it all correlates in the balance. So it's a balance, right? You get to do what you love, but you also get paid for it. And that always doesn't happen. But when it does happen, it's rad. When it does happen. And also, I really love how I colored her hair. I like like the toxic green. I really, I really like it. That's something I will say. I, I think I did an amazing part, amazing job with her hair and all that. I think I did a great job on that. So yeah, I'm proud of this piece. Um, in, in some ways, I'm proud of this piece. In some ways, it could be better. But that's with a lot of artwork, as an artist. That's with a lot of work. You see things you're proud of, you see things you're not proud of, and what you can improve on, what you can't improve on. And so, yeah. It all, it all again, it correlates in the balance and everything. So. And I've said that how many times in this video? I've said that how many times? But yeah. I'm honestly curious, though. I'm honestly curious if you guys uh, if you guys ever want to watch one of these without my commentary throughout the whole thing let me know because then I can start making these and I can maybe have some commentary in the beginning but then I can just let you guys watch it you know what I'm saying I can just let you guys watch through the whole thing and it won't be a big deal or it won't be annoying at one point, I forgot about that. At one point, I was going to give her a uvula in her mouth. But then I'm like, no, no. No, I won't do that. And with her hands, I think I did a decent job with her hands. Not the best in the world, but I think I did a decent job with her hands. And yeah, just for the fuck of it, I made her nails orange as well. Just for the fuck of it. And soon, you're going to see the calligraphy um, part of this. You're going to see the calligraphy part of me uh, making the message. Because that was also part of the... That was also part of the project was you were... 
you would have to put in a phrase like you would find on a Valentine's Day card. Like, uh, what's a typical one? Like, uh, I think the most typical ones on Valentine's Day cards, I think the most typical ones are, uh, like, Valentine's Day puns. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of puns, but, uh, I kind of went the more, uh, I went the more poem route. I went, like, with a poem. You know, like, roses are red, violets are blue. Kind of like that. Except, um, I didn't make it as obvious, you know? I just went, uh, I made up my own phrase. Because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to make up your own phrase. Plus, it would have been super lazy to use a stereotypical, like, pun or, like, cheesy line. At least in my opinion. And here... The reason why I did this with the flames is because the Orange Knight has fire magic. He ha His magic in the game is fire. So, and I, I really like how I did this. I like how I did the red and then the orange and I let it into the yellow. I really like how I did that. That is something I'll say. I like how I did that. But yeah, um, the when I get to the phrase of the Valentine's Day card, when I get to that phrase, um, you'll see, you'll see what I mean by, like, how it's a poem. You'll, you'll see what I mean. And here, I'm just filling in the, I'm just filling in the flames. At least the tip of the flames, anyway. And this took me a while, doing the orange part of the flames. That took me a little while, figuring that out. But I eventually did. And I like how it turned out. And I didn't really use stereotypical yellow, I used gold. And but I like that decision because it's nice to use different colors for things. Like it doesn't have to always be like yellow, stereotypical yellow for fire. You can use gold or a darker shade of yellow if you want. Like I was trying to make this fire imposing, you know, like a threat. So I decided to use, like, a golden yellow. Plus, it also helps it to stand out with the orange and the red and also the green hair, uh, green of her hair in the background. That also helped to do that, helped it stand out. But the orange also does that. The orange also captures your attention as well. That also captures your attention. And there I'm coloring the gloves of the night. I'm coloring, I'm coloring the gloves in. And sometimes that's what it takes. Sometimes uh, something looks bad when you're when you're drawing it, but then when you color it and put the details in, you're like, hey, that actually looks pretty good. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the same thing happened here. The same thing happened here with the hand and the glove and stuff. Same thing happened here. And I was really stuck on this detail. I was really stuck. I was like, damn it, like, come on. I know I can do this. And I think I eventually settled with that, yeah. Because I'm like, you know what? Good enough. Looks good enough. I added some more scuff marks to the axe. And then I fixed that part of the body because it was annoying me. So, yeah, then there's more line erasing. More time saved. <laughs> more time saved I could have had. fucked up, really. But, um... Soon, you'll see me drawing the letters. Soon you'll see that happen. And there you go. Um, I think I took a little break again at this point in the stream. And I just left it up for people to look at. And then I came back. And there, here we go. Here's me drawing the to and from. And then I moved it over, because I was too close. Because I was trying to keep in mind what it would be like if it was actually a card. I wanted to leave room in case people would, would like really want to write their name. Or the name of the person who's getting the card. That's why I did that. And again, because I didn't do layers, I had to color it by hand. I had to, I had to make it harder on myself. Because I didn't know about layers yet. <laughs> There's me refining the letters a little bit. And 
then, yeah, I was trying to move it. I was trying to move it a little bit. But then I was like, you know what? They can write it underneath the from. Right? They can write it underneath. Because a lot of Valentine's Day cards I got back in the day had to and from on it. So I wanted to put that on there. I didn't want to just leave those spaces empty. Because to me, then, it felt like empty space. Plus, it's supposed to be a card, so that's why I did that. And now probably comes the most intricate part, which is writing out the phrase. And I believe, if I remember correctly from the top of my head, it, the phrase was, My axe strikes deep, and then, um, what was the next phrase of my line? I should know this because I drew it. <laughs> I should know. I think it's, I think it says, I think the next phrase is, my fire burns true, I believe. Here, we'll see. Yeah, I believe that is, my fire burns true. And then the last phrase is, I am your knight, I will fight for you. And that sounds kind of stereotypical, but I think it's a good Valentine's Day phrase. I think. I don't know about you. You can leave that in the comments if you like. You could be like, dude, that's cheesy or that's ass. And honestly, if it is, if you think it is, you'll have to tell me in the comments what that is, right? You'll have to tell me. Because I'm curious what you would have put for the final phrase. over more so it looks better so that means I'd have to redraw the letters at the end here we're almost at the end at the end here I'll show you the final piece because um, you're not gonna see the final you're, you're gonna see what it looks like but the lettering isn't fully done because I did that off stream so I'll have to show you what it looks like and I'll give you a final glimpse of the piece. Yeah, and I put fight for you at the end here. There you go. So then, yep, you're gonna see me color it all in orange. And you won't see it fully finished. But, at least here, you won't see it fully finished. In a little bit here, um, you'll see it. And again, much like the chainmail, I remember this being very painful because it's all on one layer. All of it was on one layer. And yeah, again, just don't, just don't do what I did, please. I said it 500 times, but I mean it. That's why I, that's why I reiterated so much. Don't do what I did. Use separate layers, please, I beg you. Because this was such a chore, doing it on one layer, all of it on one layer. It was such a fucking chore. And it makes me sad. Just looking at it, it makes me sad. Oh, man. And yeah. Here I was probably taking a break, and I'm like, okay, I'm back. Sometimes I just have to take little breaks to be like, oh my god. Because drawing can sometimes be a chore, because you're like, oh man, like... And that sounds rich, right? That sounds rich, like, oh, drawing's a chore, huh? With some pieces, it can be a fucking chore. And you're just like, oh, come on, I want it to end already, I want it done. So you have to push through and get it done. Because otherwise it's going to be unfinished, and that's some, that's some of the worst things you can do. Is you draw something and you leave it unfinished. That's something you... Because it'll always be in the back of your head, you know? You'll be like, hey, I had that cool drawing. Why isn't it done yet? And then you look back at it and you're like, oh yeah, because I have all this to do. But if you just... Much like a lot of things, if you just go through it and tackle it, you'll get it done. So there you go. 
that's what it looks like. That's where the stream ends, around here. And, um, and pretty soon here, in just a second, you're going to see the final results. The final results. Like, the completely finished thing. So, yep, here you go. This here on the left is the fully finished piece. As you can see, the words are all finely, they're finely tuned and drawn. You can see there's all the line work is there that you didn't see in the previous few seconds. And yeah, that was my speed art video for drawing my Valentine's Day card for Newgrounds. So I believe, if I remember right, I think this collaboration I was a part of got front paged on Newgrounds. So um, that helped, that gave me a lot of confidence and it helped me inspire to draw more, even more. And that's why you're going to see even more of these videos come out. And if you made it this far, if you listen to my insane ramblings this far, I have to commend you and thank you for watching. Because holy shit. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So yeah, um, yeah, if you're here, like I just said, thank you for watching. Thank you for making it this far. If you want to see more videos, um, at the end, I'll have, uh, I'll have a little outro, and you can check out some of my other videos, um, you can check out my channel. I do other drawings like this, otherwise I play video games as well. Um, I mainly play whatever I think of or come up with, or, I, or whatever people suggest, so... Yeah, if you're interested in that, just stick around, and I'd appreciate if you did all the normal YouTube shit, like comment and subscribe, all that stuff. I'd really appreciate it. And, yeah, I'll have to see you in the next one. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And, yeah, um, peace out.